For over a decade, Epic Rap Battles of History has remained one of the most famous shows on YouTube, and for good reason. Through its ups and downs over the years, it has pitted hundreds of historical and pop culture figures against each other in witty musical duels. And having been watching for so long, I had the idea to put all the battles into a tier list which eventually morphed into a 23 page long script. Along with these fellow creators, we spent an absurd amount of time rating every single episode of the show. So without further ado, I present to you our rankings of every ERB from worst to best. Sarah Palin versus Lady Gaga. This is easily the worst battle of the entire series, with not a single person in our group disagreeing with that assessment. I think it's fair to say that season one of ERB is the most hit or miss quality wise, and this was one that failed on every possible level. The lyrics are super primitive, with them rhyming words like art and fart, and the woman playing Sarah Palin is a good impersonator, but not a great rapper. And on top of that, it's really forgettable. There's also these jokes alluding to the idea that Lady Gaga is a man, going as far as to call her a transvestite. I really don't understand what they were going for here, but our best guess is it's a reference to the fact that Nice Peter is cross-dressing as a woman in the battle? I really can't say for sure. Add to this the fact that Sarah Palin hasn't remained that relevant of a public figure, and it's of our opinion that this battle just hasn't aged very well at all. Bruce Banner vs Bruce Jenner Going forward, you should know that I really dislike Season 5 of VRB, and you'll slowly learn the reasons why, starting with Jenner vs Banner. On a conceptual level, this is actually pretty clever, two people named Bruce that transform or transition, but the execution is baffling. Firstly, Caitlyn Jenner is given a ton of extra time at the end of the battle, which Epic Lloyd himself has since admitted in hindsight was a bad move. On top of this, they appear to purposely hold back a lot of potentially edgy jokes that they could have made revolving around Caitlyn. Instead, the battle devolves into nothing more than a children's cartoon style teachable moment about acceptance and being yourself which is fine and all until you realize this is the same series which has Hitler making concentration camp jokes. My only guess for why they went this route is that this battle was to make up for the trans jokes in Palin vs Gaga half a decade prior, but as evidenced by having the worst like to dislike ratio in the entire series, it fell flat. Adam vs Eve This is the third and final battle that I believe failed on the most basic of levels to make it F tier. The matchup has little to do with the biblical account of the first two humans, but instead turns into a cliche man v woman back and forth with obvious stereotypes of each gender exhibited in the lyrics. On top of the jokes that could have come right out of a 90s sitcom, it also at times is incredibly vulgar which is a clash I don't feel works in its favor. It's a shame that they weren't able to give Jenna Marbles something better to work with. Donald Trump vs Hillary Clinton With the massive amount of success Obama v Romney saw four years prior, many including myself were excited to see what Peter and Lloyd would do for the 2016 election cycle. Despite my disappointment in season 5 up to that point, I hoped that they wouldn't screw this up, but by the end I was left disappointed. The crazy thing is, the battle itself is decent until Lincoln comes down at the end to give a speech about how Orange Man is bad. In 2012, both candidates got a slap from Abe, but this time he slapped Trump twice and tells Hillary to beat him before flying away. I find this completely antithetical to the point of the show since it's supposed to be up to the audience to decide who the winner is, hence my low ranking. I would have given it an F if it weren't for the others in the group fighting against me. Miley Cyrus vs Joan of Arc This one kind of feels like it was done to cash in on a now forgotten moment in tabloid history, making the battle feel like an artifact of its era. For those that don't remember, Miley Cyrus's provocative Wrecking Ball music video was released in September of 2013, which was followed by a lot of controversies surrounding the former Disney Channel star, and this ERB is playing into those headlines, making it feel antiquated in 2021. This just goes to show the importance of taking a step back to see if your content will withstand the test of time. Gandalf vs Dumbledore 
While the battle itself is okay for Season 1 standards, what drops it down a tier to me is how much of a letdown it is. With this possibly being their most requested matchup at the time, they really didn't do much with the premise, making many, including our team, forget about its existence until making this video. I just listened to it again before writing, yet I am unable to recall the beats, lyrics, or visuals of the video. It really is surprising how forgettable this one is to me. Oprah Winfrey vs. Ellen DeGeneres Even upon release, this battle was pretty basic. Both actors play their parts decently, but in retrospect, with what we know now involving the behind-the-scenes treatment on Ellen, this one doesn't age the best since it simply pumps up the disgraced talk show host's fake persona. That, of course, is not Lloyd or Peter's fault, but nowadays, this is an entry that I usually skip when I listen through Season 4. John Lennon vs. Bill O'Reilly you gotta give this one props, as it's the battle that started it all and laid the groundwork for a formula that has continued on for over 10 years. That being said, looking back now, it's incredibly weak. The matchup is basically completely random, with the two stars having no relation. The costumes are pretty bad as well, with the terrible toupee on Lloyd, and Peter doesn't even attempt a British accent. On top of this, I'm not the biggest fan of the rhymes either. All that being said, it's not F tier because it's a good first attempt considering the limited resources they had to work with at the time. Frederick Douglass vs. Thomas Jefferson this was an early battle of Season 5, and also the embodiment of many of the problems the season has overall. Though starting off strong with a stellar first verse, the song is quickly sidetracked into being a public service announcement about the atrocities committed by the former president, at the expense of this being a good rap battle. In concept, I don't mind this since Douglas schooling a slave-owning president could have been entertaining. The problem is, the team felt they needed to add such specific messaging to the script that it came to the detriment of the final product. They were so fixated on telling every single screwed up detail about Jefferson that they crammed in lyrics that didn't fit, and as a result made J.B. Smoove's second verse have the worst flow in the entire series. Listening to it again, I'm still baffled at what they were thinking. As evident by the alternative family-friendly version uploaded to their second channel, this was made in a bid to market the series as an educational tool in schools, possibly in response to the success of Hamilton at the time. Either way, the turn this battle took was very disappointing considering how strong it starts. Donald Trump vs. Ebenezer Scrooge It's so weird watching this one with the context of today. Trump vs. Scrooge was released in December of 2013, well before the real estate tycoon announced he was running for office. Looking back, Epic Lloyd played a much better Trump than what is done here, with nice Peter essentially just yelling rather than doing an impression. The gimmick of the battle is that it retells the story of A Christmas Carol, except with the spirits being portrayed by J.P. Morgan, Kanye West, and the Grim Reaper. Even though I appreciate what they were going for, at the end end of the day, its execution isn't the best, with it coming off a bit jumbled and confusing. But hey, at least they got Trump to tweet about it. Donald Trump vs. Joe Biden don't ask me why all the Trump-related entries are D-tier, that's just how things played out. Honestly, this one just seems pretty dull to me. I'm sure many could argue it seems sided in favor of Biden, but at least they weren't as on the nose about it as in 2016. The bigger issue is nothing's that memorable about it. I think the biggest reason for this is the exclusion of Abraham Lincoln makes this feel incomplete. They didn't even have to make him the third challenger either, but maybe Ronald Reagan or Rose Roosevelt would have livened things up. As we'll get to later, Season 6 was an improvement over Season 5, but this battle is the exception. Genghis Khan vs. The Easter Bunny For the longest time, I scratched my head wondering what they were thinking when matching up these two. The best hypothesis we could come up with was that they took a super evil and dark person and matched him against something extremely lighthearted and innocent. On top of this, the episode was meant to be an Easter special, with Genghis Khan's birth date being the most common day for Easter Sunday to fall upon. Perhaps that's enough to intertwine the two? My favorite part of this one is when the announcer makes an audible
audible sigh before announcing the Easter Bunny. It adds to the overall humor the beat produces. It may be a bit too silly, but it does put a smile on your face. Overall, it's a lackluster battle that's over before it starts to get good, but still, it's not terrible. Hulk Hogan vs. Kim Jong-il this is another matchup with some of that Season 1 ERB charm, as two strong men duke it out, leading to some very memorable lines. Where it falls flat, however, are the visuals, as Hulk Hogan's costume looks like they purchased it for 20 bucks at a Halloween store, and some of the effects are very underwhelming. Considering the battle has a different font used at the bottom of the screen than any of the others, I have a feeling Peter and Lloyd weren't as hands-on in the post-production this time around, and it shows. This is made even more evident by the fact that in 2019, they re-edited the entire battle, which does improve the issues noticed in the original. Abraham Lincoln vs. Chuck Norris Despite being iconic, this one is also dated. While the line, my raps will blow your mind like a verbal John Wilkes Booth will always be one of the series greatest, looking back now, much of the battle is nothing more than Chuck Norris jokes, which a lot of younger watchers won't even understand. Despite the corniness though, it is still a classic. Wonder Woman vs. Stevie Wonder In one of the series' few celebrity appearances, T-Pain portrays Stevie Wonder against the world's most famous female superhero, played by Lily Singh. Like other battles of Season 5, the production value is high, but also common with its season's peers is the shallow writing, with T-Pain's criticisms fixating on how unrealistic Wonder Woman's superpowers are and her shortcomings as a feminist icon. Lily Singh does a decent job here, but her verses are nothing amazing. Still, this is not a bad entry by any means. Justin Bieber vs. Beethoven Remember when everyone passionately hated Justin Bieber a decade ago? Well, this battle is a time capsule for that era of history, as he faced off against one of the most famous musicians of all time. What saves this one for me is its remix of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. It's a beat that's so catchy and creative. Justin Bieber, who is being portrayed by what appears to be a 30-year-old man, is really the worst part. But Beethoven almost makes up for it with lyrically dense rhymes. Christopher Columbus vs. Captain Kirk This was a really fun little battle in which Epic Lloyd really goes at it with his William Shatner impression. I recall upon release, there were a lot of complaints about his impression being too excessive, but going back now, it might be my favorite part. It's short but sweet and finds itself C-tier for that very reason. Gordon Ramsay vs. Julia Child As mentioned before, Season 5 really upped the production value of the episodes, but I don't necessarily think that was a good thing, and this battle is the best example for why more isn't always better. There's so much going on in this video that it's almost unrecognizable from the original format of the show being two guys in front of green screens rapping. Even with that being said, it's clear a lot of work was put into this one. The impressions are good, and many of the lines are clever, so I can't bring myself to hate on it too much. Doc Brown vs. Doctor Who While most of us really enjoyed this time traveler battle and were going to put it higher up the list, Class Act Jack, having consumed every piece of content involving Doctor Who ever made, went on a tirade to us about how surface level the jokes were involving the BBC's iconic sci-fi program. So he wouldn't hurt us, we lowered its ranking. But still, personally, I think the twist ending is pretty clever. Batman vs. Sherlock Holmes This one gets a lot of flack, especially by ERB themselves. Honestly though, Nice Peter's Batman isn't terrible, and I think Zack Sherwin is great as always, with some clever wordplay, though his final verse isn't as great as they hype it up to be. On top of that, the way Epic Lloyd plays Robin remains hilarious. Overall, it's a fun Season 2 fight. Nice Peter vs. Epic Lloyd Part 1 and 2 
We honestly couldn't figure out where to put these two as they're not really like any of the other battles. These are much more meta as it's just the show's creators taking shots at one another, oftentimes very viciously, with them both ending on large announcements. The first one telling people that they were moving the show to its own channel, and the second informing fans that they were going on hiatus. At the end of the day, we decided to put them in C tier as they really don't belong anywhere in particular. So the middle of the center tier seems mostly fair. Santa Claus vs. Moses If I recall correctly, during Snoop Dogg's Rastafarian phase when he went by Snoop Lion, he was doing some work with Maker Studios, who were also running epic rap battles of history at the time, which allowed this collaboration to happen, as the acclaimed rapper plays the part of God's prophet. I never understood why they matched up Santa with Moses, but upon discussing the rankings, I came to the realization that this battle was most likely originally going to be Jesus versus Santa. That was until either Maker Studios axed the idea or maybe they realized if they went through with it, people wouldn't stop asking when Muhammad was going to be in a battle. All that being said, this one's mostly remembered for the inclusion of possibly their most famous celebrity guest. Tony Hawk vs. Wayne Gretzky Heading into the end of Season 5, before a long hiatus, this battle saw a low point viewership-wise for the series. But I attribute that to being a less hyped matchup rather than it being terrible. I really don't have much else to say about this, so let's just move on. George Washington vs. William Wallace Both Peter and Lloyd have very over-the-top impressions for this one, and I honestly don't mind that at all. My bigger problem is that while the battle starts out strong, it kind of starts to fizzle a bit in the second half. It's really hard to write opinions for the C-tier ones because they're mostly all pretty average. Ash Ketchum vs. Charles Darwin I recall that in an old ERB behind the scenes video, Ray William Johnson talked about playing Ash Ketchum for the show, and I was hyped. After years of waiting, the anime series titular star made his entrance, but Ray was not playing him, which for some reason slightly saddened me. The battle's matchup is clever, and Ash is actually given a pretty edgy joke about Darwin's kids dying, so that's a plus, I guess. As a person that played a lot of Pokemon as a kid, I'm disappointed that there's no deeper jokes for fans to pick up on here, with the writers mainly just focusing on some surface level references to Generation 1, the anime, and Pokemon Go. With all that being said, it's okay. David Copperfield vs. Harry Houdini What originally was looked at as a D-tier battle quickly rose up the ranks upon our rewatch, as this gem really shines when you're paying attention. For example, the heartbeat monitor that persists throughout the battle complements the beats, with it rapidly increasing depending on the intensity of the bars. Also, at the 52nd mark of this video, when Copperfield shakes his hand, you can see the poster of Houdini turning into one of himself. And to top it off, some of these rhymes that I always thought were pretty terrible actually had some clever wordplay upon closer inspection. This is one I enjoy more now than when it came out. Lewis and Clark vs. Bill and Ted I know I shouldn't be talking since I'm making an hour-long list ranking every episode of a YouTube show, but I always felt Rhett and Link came off a bit too dorky in their rap battles. That being said, there's a charm to their cameos here, no doubt. This fictional vs. non-fictional explorer fight is an obvious choice for ERB, and everything is pretty well done. By far my favorite part of the video are the visuals of Sakajuwea doing all the work for Lewis and Clark in the background. It's really a clever touch. Shaka Zulu vs. Julius Caesar This African king might be the most obscure historical figure to headline a rap battle, and I'll give them props for taking that risk. Nice Peter is calm and calculated like the actual Caesar was, and Shaka Zulu played by Daystorm Power isn't too bad himself. Overall, it's yet another decent fight. Freddy Krueger vs. Wolverine After Season 5, Epic Rap Battles of History went on hiatus, but after a few years away, Nice Peter and Epic Lloyd returned to their creation, and evident by the fact that only one of the most recent season's battles were mentioned up until this point, I found it to be an improvement, with one of the earlier in this new batch being Freddy v. Wolverine. If I had to complain about one thing, I guess I could say that Wax, who you might know best from your favorite Martian's best song, Orphan Tears, 
years, didn't do the best impression ever for the horror icon, but it's not terrible. On the plus side, there are plenty of memorable lines. Vlad the Impaler vs. Count Dracula After the first two episodes of Season 6, ERB returned to the simpler visual style that the show used to have, which I think signifies the team going back to basics, evident by Vlad v. Dracula. All around this feels like a classic battle with no frills or gimmicks, just two popular figures duking it out through clever wordplay. It was around this point that the show really won me over again, and this episode was a great example as to why why that's the case. George Carlin vs. Richard Pryor Even though it might not be as epic as Russian leaders or movie directors, this stand-up comedian battle royale still is a lot of fun. It has some ruthless bars, a lot of them coming from Joan Rivers, played by Jackie Tan who does a great job playing the part. My only major complaint is even though the inclusion of Bill Cosby is funny the first time around, his section hinders the song on follow-up listens. If it wasn't for that, we might have bumped it up to the next tier. Sir Isaac Newton vs. Bill Nye the Science Guy This battle is a Redditor's wet dream. It features Weird Al as Isaac Newton fighting against Neil deGrasse Tyson and Bill Nye. While the flows aren't anything extraordinary, the overall package still winds up being above average which is why it just barely made B tier. James Bond vs. Austin Powers Yes, this battle falls victim to much of Season 5's problems, from going overboard on the visuals and a ham-fisted section about how the original James Bond was a misogynist, but I can't help but look past that to see a well-put-together fight. This is a long one, which allows it time to dig deep into these franchises and deliver some witty lines that can be appreciated on multiple levels. Elon Musk vs. Mark Zuckerberg As the premiere of Season 6, this was ERB's first battle since leaving Maker Studios and going fully independent again. It also put many worries about the future of the series to rest. The location switch-ups of this one are pretty entertaining, with Zuckerberg's verse starting in court and Musk ending up on Mars by the conclusion. While still flashy, it's not as overbearing as many of Season 5's battles were. The performances probably could have been improved a bit, Pete nails a Zuckerberg impression for the first two lines, but then just does a Muppet voice for the rest of the battle. And you can't really hear any sort of South African accent from Lloyd. Still, this battle was a good sign for what was to follow. Alexander the Great vs. Ivan the Terrible This is the longest battle in ERB history, and if you aren't super well versed in world history, you might not have any idea who some of these people are. Honestly though, I like when they do this as it encourages you to do your own research then come back later to understand the inside jokes. Despite no comical, fictional characters making an appearance, this one is still quite goofy, which works because of the execution. The Terminator vs. Robocop This battle's strong suit is its visuals. The costumes are amazing, the effects are cool, and the atmosphere is well developed, especially with touches like the floating debris. And because the battle is sponsored by Terminator Genesis, with the extra budget we were able to get possibly the coolest ERB outro yet, with the logo mutating into Arnold himself. The overall rap isn't the most memorable of all time, but it's extremely solid for what it is. Artists vs. TMNT The season 3 finale features a pretty impressive cast list for 2014-era YouTube, with Rhett and Link and Smosh rapping side by side. To start off, the turtle costumes are great. I remember watching this and wondering how they dealt with Leo's costume containing both blue and green, since it would add an extra level of complication to the chroma king of the character. Looking back now, I assume someone had to just mask it out by hand in After Effects. In other ways though, this this finale is slightly underwhelming. Although the flows on both sides are fairly strong, none of the lyrics are particularly savage or memorable, and the song is incredibly brief considering there's 8 characters here. In the end, this one is probably in the better as a suggestion than fully realized department, but for its sheer scale, it deserves a spot in the B tier. 
Ghostbusters vs. Mythbusters. For many years, this matchup was one of the most popular recommendations in the channel's history. The comment that's featured at the end of the video has 54,000 likes, an unheard of number back in the day. So did it meet fans' high expectations? I'd say so, considering this could have easily been another one of those ideas that's better as a concept. For one, it holds the record for most rappers in an ERB to date, with a total of 10 people wielding the mic. Is it a bit cheesy? Sure, but they did a good job, all things considered. Now we just have to keep on harassing them until they finally make Homer Simpson versus Peter Griffin. Thanos vs. J. Robert Oppenheimer This episode is the very definition of a mixed bag. On one hand, there's bobblehead Thanos, whose strange coloring and inability to lip-sync with the song looks like something out of a fan-made ERB. On the other side of the fight, however, there's Nice Peter's Oppenheimer, which might be one of the best performances in all six seasons. His delivery, along with the effect they put on his voice, is nothing less than chilling, really getting the point across that this is a man haunted by his own invention. The lyrics are also all over the place quality-wise. At one moment, there's incredible roasts and witty wordplay, then a second later, Thanos refers to himself as Fortnite's dopest dancer. The placement of this battle was fought hard. It's a D-tier and S-tier battle mixed into one, so we met somewhere in the middle. Goku vs. Superman This matchup has garnered the most views out of anything from Season 3, as it was another one of those highly requested pairings. I think more so than any other battle, this had the risk of coming off as really cheesy. Fortunately, the end product is quite fun. The costumes are good, although Epic Lloyd might have been a little too pudgy for a character with the build of Superman, and Ray William Johnson as Goku is an interesting choice. Part of what makes this battle memorable for me personally is the last line, which is one of the harshest disses in all of ERB. I really can't stress enough how much a battle is improved when there's at least one joke that pushes the envelope a bit. This all leads to a much more important question. If we can have Goku in a rap battle, why can't we have him in Smash Bros? Nikola Tesla vs. Thomas Edison This is a battle too many people sleep on. The lyrics are smart, it's fast-paced, the visuals are fun, everything is in order for it to be a solid Season 2 installment. Although Pete provides the voice, Tesla is played by longtime ERB music supervisor Dante Simadamore in his first and only appearance as a rapper in the series, and he does well. A point I haven't brought up until now, though, is that even though Season 2 might be the best overall, my only complaint is that a lot of these battles run on the short side, with this being no exception. Still, it's enjoyable. Jacques Cousteau vs. Steve Irwin the battle is a bit of a role reversal, with Pete playing the curmudgeonly old guy and Lloyd capturing the crocodile hunter's liveliness and infectious enthusiasm. The rap is energetic on both sides, and even if the disses are not as heavy as they could be, we decided it didn't deserve anything less than B tier. Barack Obama vs. Mitt Romney this battle is currently the most watched in ERB history, garnering over 150 million views. It's an insane number that I feel signifies when the series peaked in popularity. It was their first election battle and was also their most neutral and even out of the three they've done. Abe Lincoln's entrance and subsequent verse is only the cherry on top, remaining one of the most humorous twists in the show's run. Confirmed by the ERB crew, this one was so big in its day that even Barack Obama Obama has seen it, which is kind of awkward considering one of the lyrics refers to Michelle Obama as the female version of Patrick Ewing. But given that Lloyd and Pete were invited to the White House as part of a YouTube envoy, the former president was clearly a good sport about it. Frank Sinatra vs. Freddie Mercury This is a strong rap that could have been even stronger. Pete knocks it out of the park with his impression, but unfortunately, Lloyd's take on Frank Sinatra is as lackluster as it comes. Freddie's verses also have more going on, including a lot of references for fans of Queen to enjoy. The saving grace for Sinatra is that he has one great jab with his roulette line at the end. 
The Mario Brothers vs. The Wright Brothers. This is the first two-on-two -two fight in epic rap battle of history's discography, and it set a pretty strong precedent. While Pete and Lloyd's rendition of the Mario Bros isn't terrible, the main attraction of this battle are Rhett and Link's series debut as the Wright Bros, who kill their verses. Part of what makes this battle so enjoyable is that it understands that the connection between the two pairs is paper thin, so they just have fun with it. It's short and sweet, and given that the video has has received nearly a hundred million impressions, there's no denying a lot of people agree with our assessment. Master Chief vs. Leonidas This season 2 throwdown between the Spartans has become an ERB classic despite its brief runtime. Pete's impression of Halo's main character is spot on, with him spitting some fairly solid lines, the most famous of them being when he points out that even his initials spell MC. The rap doesn't exactly fire on all cylinders though. Epic Lloyd's cameo as the baby is kind of cornball-y. But nevertheless, this was some high-quality content on YouTube back in 2012. Heck, even by 2021 standards, it's impressive. Mother Teresa vs. Sigmund Freud This matchup's tone is unexpectedly funky given the subject matter, and they make it work. Mother Teresa's actress kills it, and I also appreciate that Pete's accent is distinct from any prior performance. It's nobody's favorite battle, but when arranging the list, we couldn't come up with a reason to put it any lower. Bruce Lee vs. Clint Eastwood This fight has some jokes I don't think Nice Peter would allow if they were to make it in the current year. Mike Diva was a great choice for Bruce Lee, but he was no match for Lloyd's Clint Eastwood, who delivered some of the edgiest lyrics in ERB history, such as I even squint better than you, make my iPod, and no one in your family ever lives to see a sequel. They were holding no punches. How they played with the background extras was also cool for attention to viewers, with ninjas becoming cowboys and vice versa every time one crossed the rapper's dimensional threshold. Great battle all in all. Guy Fox vs. Che Guevara this was the season 6 battle that took things back to basics, and it's one of my personal favorites because of it. What makes it work is clever writing, not elaborate visual effects or set pieces. Che's flow is pretty good, but Guy's lines steal the show. Even though Pete's English accent is very inconsistent, that doesn't stop his second verse from being one of the best in the show's decade-long run. J.R.R. Tolkien vs. George R.R. Martin this was actually a pretty decent premiere for Season 5. You can start to see the raised budget start to reveal itself, but the editing isn't as excessive and dizzying as it would be in some of the season's other battles. Lloyd does more of an interpretation of the Game of Thrones writer than an impression, but it works. And the three verse per rapper arrangement, with the middle verse only having two lines, is probably the best format that ERB has ever experimented with. Ronald McDonald vs. The Burger King This is yet another one of those matchups that has been recommended since day one. And while it may seem odd that it took six seasons for it to happen, ERB's presumed fear that they jumped the shark by pitting these two mascots against each other was understandable. They finally dipped their toes in the water by testing the concept on their second channel, and fans loved the final product so much that they made it into a real epic rap battle. The performances are absurdly good, you could really tell tell they were having fun with it. Lloyd is so in his element as the Burger King that I could envision the actual company contacting him to star in a commercial. The bright backgrounds for both characters are also perfectly crafted in representing their respective brands. Because the verses are mostly copy-pasted from the second channel vid, the lyrics as a whole feel much less refined than a usual ERB, which I actually don't mind in a battle as tongue-in-cheek as this one. I only wish Wendy's bars at the end were a little more biting as it's the only thing holding back this wonderful installment. Bob Ross vs. Pablo Picasso This is the first battle to feature painters as rappers, and they make good use of the theme, with fun gags like Picasso drawing a middle finger and Ross painting his own landscape background. The rap is a mellow tune that doesn't take itself too seriously. Nice Peter's performance as the PBS star clearly borrows from his secret savage portrayal of Mr. Rogers back in Season 1, which is fine by me as it adds an extra level to the battle's humor. Jack the Ripper vs. Hannibal Lecter 
A serial killer face-off was inevitable, and what Peter and Lloyd came up with did not disappoint. The battle's instrumental is widely considered by fans to be the best in ERB's history. The sound mixing in general delivers an aura of eeriness that's helped by the spooky visuals. This one also marked Dan Bull's debut on the channel, and he nails his performance. Epic Lloyd's portrayal of Hannibal is also pretty awesome as well. Ultimately, what holds this battle back from SRA tier at the end of the day is its lack of noteworthy lines. Still, a good battle all around. Deadpool vs. Boba Fett Released during the break in between Season 4 and 5, this was the first bonus battle in the series, as they appeared to come out of hiatus to cash in on the hype around Star Wars and Deadpool because of their movies at the time. That turned out to be a smart move, as there's only been one battle since then that has accumulated as many views. The raps in this one are super inventive, especially if you're knowledgeable of both characters' universes. Staying true to Deadpool's meta humor, some of his lines have double meanings, one for the Star Wars canon and one for ERB canon. For example, the lyric, who you calling schizophrenic, you got two different voices, could be referencing the Star Wars special edition, or it could be referencing Ray William Johnson voicing Boba back in season 3. It's so satisfying to pick up on little details like that. Because both MCs wear masks, they were also able to hire professional dancers to make both characters really stand out visually compared to other battles. Overall, very enjoyable. Napoleon Bonaparte vs. Napoleon Dynamite Season 1 of Epic Rap Battles of History is the most hit or miss quality wise. Since we already discussed the lemons, from here on out we can take a look at the iconic matchups found on Nice Peter's personal account. The connection of this battle being that they both have the first name Napoleon is a fun one. The opening is great with them both riding into battle on their trusty steeds, and Bonaparte's final line telling his opponent, you're the only kind of dynamite that's never going to bang, has become a fan favorite. If this battle has one Achilles heel, it's that the instrumental is kind of overbearing. The volume for the rapper's vocals could have been turned up a little higher, but that's about it for complaints. This really showed the first signs of the series finding its groove. Plus, it's also Epic Lloyd's all-time favorite, which gives it a slight boost in our ranking. Blackbeard vs. Al Capone Following Hitler vs. Vader 3, this battle effectively acted as the true premiere as far as representing what way the series would be heading after Season 2. Fortunately, it was a pretty terrific direction. Musically speaking, the song is an absolute earworm. Nice Peter is on record as saying that Capone's first verse is one of the best flows in the show's run, and upon a re-listen, I can see where he's coming from. The battle also holds significance as as it's the first one to be sponsored. Edward Kenway, the protagonist of Assassin's Creed Black Flag, not only gets a mention in one of the lyrics, but is also featured in both characters' backgrounds. And it doesn't feel annoying or intrusive in the slightest. At the end of the day, it kind of adds to the battle's charm as a time capsule of 2013. Mr. T vs. Mr. Rogers This is a season 1 classic, pure and simple. The macho vibe of Mr. T juxtaposed with the soft energy of Mr. Rogers makes for an intensely watchable dynamic. Daystorm does a great job in his role as the professional wrestler, and Nice Peter's performance is one of his most memorable of all time. Lloyd's cameos are pretty hilarious as well, with the battle ending on one of the series' best lines. Billy Mays vs. Benjamin Franklin I'm still able to vividly remember clicking on this video when it first appeared in my feed all the way back in 2011, and I've loved it ever since. The backgrounds are especially great here. Ben has a simple yet effective rotating constitution, and Billy's emulating the style of a mid-2000s as seen on TV commercial. The guy they found to play Maze did a tremendous job playing the famed TV salesman. They really do look alike. And having him die of a heart attack made for a surprise surprisingly real moment in the battle, especially considering the real-life pitchman had died less than two years prior. And while the ShamWow guy might not be the first backup rapper in ERB history, he's definitely the first really good one. I still chuckle at the line, your style so broke they call you poor Richard all these years later. Call it nostalgia, but this is one of my favorites. 
Romeo and Juliet versus Bonnie and Clyde. Many consider this a better team battle than Mario Bros versus Ripe Bros, and it's not hard to see why. The beat is sick, the performances are great, and every verse tops the last. Like many of the best ERBs, this battle has its very own little story, in this case mimicking the classic Shakespeare tragedy, and the way their deaths are performed through rhyme is easy to follow, extremely clever, and amusing all at the same time. Theodore Roosevelt vs. Winston Churchill I have to be honest with you, I had never watched this one before now. It was late in season 5, and by that point, I wasn't very motivated to click anymore. All these years later, I find out that that was a huge mistake, as it's by far the best of the 2016 batch. With great costumes and choreography, it is truly an epic battle with a near theatrical beat to match. But the standout here is the writing, with plenty of historical fanfare presented in a savage yet educational way. This is carried even to the end of the video, where they allude to their most important moments in the slowed down sequence. Scattered throughout are also callbacks to Roosevelt's previous appearances on the account when he played the announcer for the channel updates. Rick Grimes vs. Walter White This is the gold standard for well done fan service. Both Lloyd and Pete nail the body and vocal mannerisms of their respective characters, and I especially love how they handle the meeting of these distinct universes by subtly comparing meth addicts to zombies. Really, there's nothing to dislike here. Michael Jordan vs. Muhammad Ali if we're counting points for realism, this battle is probably the most grounded of them all. The backgrounds seem authentic and lived in, the beat feels like it's right out of the 90s, and most importantly, the lines are delivered with a personal animosity that keeps your eyes glued to their expressions. Of course, this battle is elevated by Key and Peele's excellent chemistry, which I'll discuss more later on. It's a shame they've only done two battles. Cleopatra vs. Marilyn Monroe to date, this is by far the best female-centric episode. Both actresses do an incredible job in portraying these icons, but Kimmy Gatewood in particular feels like she's trained her whole life to be on ERB. Her body language and facial expressions are absolute gold. And of course, I'd be a fool not to mention that this battle has some extremely vicious lyrics. Cleopatra telling Marilyn that she lost so many babies we should call you Miss Carriage is yet another contender for most brutal line in the whole series. Harry Potter vs. Luke Skywalker we finally reached the most recent of videos included on this list, the Season 6 Finale. Potter vs. Skywalker was long awaited and honestly I think it lived up to the hype, with gorgeous stop motion work by Forest Fire 101, who you might know from making the Duck Song. Because it's the longest 1v1 battle in the series run, there's an insane amount of intricacy to these lines, with enough references to keep fans of both franchises re-watching. I think this is a battle that will be remembered for years to come. Stephen King vs. Edgar Allan Poe The flows in this battle are amazing and the backgrounds are some of the coolest as well. While this isn't Watsky's first time playing a classic poet in the series, many feel he's at his best here. On top of this, Zach Sherwin was just a natural choice as Stephen King given his affinity for writing. The beat is fantastic, the pace is addictive, and there's a plethora of references for literary fans to catch. This battle is definitely one of the high points of Season 3. The real Stephen King revealed on Twitter that he was a big fan as well, offering his own lyrics. Listen here, Poe, never seen a rapper as lame as you. I'll fill your pit and bust your pendulum too. Dr. Seuss vs. William Shakespeare I'm going to start sounding like a broken record going onward, but this one is a certified classic. Shakespeare's second verse is probably the fastest delivered in all of ERB, with all of his lyrics written in iambic pentameter, which I imagine is thanks to Watsky, who makes his series debut. The editing in this battle is also incredibly advanced for Season 1, with the visuals for Cat in the Hat looking straight out of Season 5, but in a good way. Nice Peter telling Shakespeare that you leave a classroom looking like the end of Macbeth is easily in my top 5 favorite lyrics of all time. So with all this praise, you might ask what drags this battle below S tier? Well, the answer is simple. 
Thing 1 and Thing 2. They are pretty difficult to watch and keep it from being a 10 out of 10. Babe Ruth vs. Lance Armstrong. This was their first athlete battle, and boy was it a special one. I know I've been citing a lot of lines for the past few entries, but I can't not highlight that Babe telling Lance, with all that blood and attitude, you're like a menstrual cyclist, is another contender for best burn of all time. On top of that, I really love the intensity Peter brings to his performance. They really went all out. Steven Spielberg vs. Alfred Hitchcock This was the second cavalcade battle of the show's run, and it doesn't disappoint. The different beats and backgrounds are perfectly assigned to each director's style, and it makes for a truly varied fight. Spielberg's verse is enchanting, Hitchcock's is thrilling, Tarantino's is groovy, Kubrick's is striking, and Bay's is just unabashed schlocky fun. Obviously, there's an abundance of references for film buffs to enjoy, and all the actors do a stellar job. Seeing how people rank the verses of this one from best to worst is a good litmus test to determine what kind of ERBs they like. Mozart vs. Skrillex As the penultimate episode of season 2, this easily takes the cake as the best musician battle of the series. How the instruments change from electro to classical between the verses is so seamless that it takes a few listens to even notice. Epic Lloyd's portrayal and delivery as Skrillex is commendable. Instead of going the Bieber vs. Beethoven or Miley Cyrus vs. Joan of Arc route of blowing out a new age star, Skrillex actually puts up a decent and fight. Still, the classical composer does take the victory here with some of the funniest lyrics in ERB history. Also as a fun side note, the real Skrillex once joined a live performance of this song, so I can assume he was also a fan. Zeus vs Thor before Harry Potter vs. Luke Skywalker blew it out of the water, this was the most visually impressive ERB because of the LEGO style. And despite not holding a candle to the season 6 finale's animation, we felt that this video walked so the other could run, which is why it's ranked higher. This one has developed a cult status over the years as the most underrated ERB because of how many people instinctively dismissed it when it first came out because of the LEGOs. On top of the animation, the flow are unlike any other battle, the lyrics are incredibly well researched and there's not a lot of weak spots to be found, making this an incredibly fun one-off. Eastern Philosophers vs. Western Philosophers You can tell this episode was a passion project for the team. With so many philosophical figures on the screen at once, it's impressive that they managed to pull this off so well. There's a lot of complexities in this battle with a boatload of historical references, and all the performers do a stellar job. The standout moment for this fight is the ending where all participants end up arguing amongst themselves, likely what would have happened in real life if all these philosophers met. The narrator asking what is winning at the end is only icing on the cake. Easily one of the smartest battles in the show's run. Gandhi vs. Martin Luther King when crafting a rap duel between proponents of peace, there's two traps that can easily be fallen into. One, you make a regular battle that unrealistically represents its real life figures, or two, you stay true to the characters but end up with a timid and boring final product. In this case, the team managed to strike a perfect balance so they didn't fall into either of these traps. Key and Peele's involvement can't be understated. Their comedic sensibilities come off perfectly when playing their role. This includes their mannerisms and voice impressions. The battle is also home to some of the most clever turns of phrase in the entire show, with the ending being possibly the most memorable and impactful as they cross into each other's realms for the world's most aggressive hug. I want to go watch this video again just thinking about it. My only problem? It's very short, but I can't dock points for something being so good that I'm left wanting more. Michael Jackson vs. Elvis Presley This battle is too often overlooked when people pick their favorite ERBs. Depicting how both of these stars changed as their careers progressed makes this rap extra brilliant, with Michael starting the battle as the Jackson 5's main attraction and ending it as the smooth criminal. At the same time, Elvis begins with his jailhouse rock appearance and ends it looking like, well, Fat Elvis. This artistic choice gives their portrayal of these larger-than-life figures a level of authenticity that 
that 95% of battles don't accomplish. On top of this, it's just a really cool idea. They did run the risk of a child performance ruining the battle, but luckily, Bentley Green does a phenomenal job. As is always the case, what makes this battle S tier is that all the lines are hard hitting and impactful. In most cases, you're lucky to get even one truly deep cut per battle, but here, there's so much material to work with that the odds were stacked against Michael to begin with. Albert Einstein vs. Stephen Hawking This one is nothing less than iconic, with so many classic moments in ERB history being attributed to this 1 minute and 50 second fight. Although it may be short, they pull out all the stops. This is Zach Sherwin's debut to the series, and he has a humorous way of playing the theoretical physicist. And the reveal of Nice Peter's robot voice may be the funniest thing the show has ever done. If you grew up watching the show, I'm certain you have Stephen Hawking Verses imprinted in your head even all these years later. Joker versus Pennywise. This recent matchup is proof the show can still make stellar battles. There's no elaborate set pieces, no gimmicks, no political agenda, and no secret guest appearances halfway through. It's just two iconic villains throwing extremely clever verses at one another for three and a half minutes straight. Nice Peter as the Joker is fantastic, and I would argue it's one of his strongest performances. And Epic Lloyd as Pennywise does a phenomenal job capturing the unsettling nature of the character. There's a reason why this is the most successful battle they have done since their return, and I hope they make more like it whenever Season 7 comes around. Jim Henson vs. Stan Lee the season 4 finale pits the creator of the Muppets and the creator of Marvel into one mesmerizing rap battle. The two spit fantastic bars until it becomes wholesome when they set their differences aside and make peace with one another, but that notion of peace was taken away almost immediately. In the final act of the battle, Walt Disney appears as a personification of the conglomerate his company has become, with a verse stating how he would milk Henson and Lee's creation for everything they're worth. Why am I giving a plot synopsis for this one? Well, at this point in time, Epic Rap Battles of History was essentially owned by Disney, and a little over a year after this battle, they abandoned the channel until regaining ownership to make Season 6. In hindsight, I wonder if Stan Lee and Jim Henson were just stand-ins to represent the pressures Epic Lloyd and Nice Peter had as they became cogs in the machine, longing to return to the days when they had full control over their creation. While I'm probably overthinking this, either way, it's a really good episode, but unfortunately, it just missed out on making our top three picks. The Darth Vader vs. Adolf Hitler Trilogy We decided to put all three of these into the same spot because they work so well together as a representation of the rise of the series over time. Part 1 launched the show into popularity when it went viral in 2010. Part 2 spearheaded the move to the official ERB YouTube channel, and Part 3 fully cemented the show's place in YouTube history. It's almost futile to explain why these battles are so prolific. They're the embodiment of what makes epic rap battles of history great. They're catchy, clever, edgy, goofy, funny, dramatic, and surprising. Without the idea of sparring Hitler vs. Vader, the series might have gone in a completely different direction, which is something that can't really be said for any other entry on the list. Steve Jobs vs. Bill Gates Everything is flawless about this one, down to the matchup choice. Apple vs. PC has been an age-old war on the internet, and the rival brands are personified perfectly through these figureheads. Steve Jobs hopping in before his title card immediately injects the battle with an air of playfulness, and in quick time informs the audience that this will be a very different kind of fight. The rap's instrumentals are unlike anything else they've ever used, making the song uniquely memorable. Their traditional structure of verses is tossed out the window, allowing for the two characters to shoot disses back and forth in an unprecedented way, which is all the more boosted by Pete and Lloyd's performances as they're both in their element playing these characters. Steve's death halfway through, leading to Gates' frustration of no longer having a formidable foe is also pretty touching, with the battle then being topped off with a verse from HAL 9000 that transcends anything the series has done previously. One could say it's the ERB equivalent of the star child descending to earth.
Rasputin versus Stalin. Here we are at number one, the Russian leader extravaganza. This battle broke series ground by starring not three, not four, but five distinct rappers. Rasputin, Stalin, Lenin, Gorbachev, and Putin, all played by either Pete or Lloyd. No one who was a fan back in 2012 will ever forget their first time viewing this fight. When you just stared at your screen with a widening grin as it continued to build on itself, with clever writing, amazing beats, and enthralling performances. Really, all you need to know about Rasputin vs. Stalin is that despite being solely composed of foreign historical figures, this upload has earned over a hundred million views. That's how amazing it is. I'm pretty sure an entire generation of American teens gleaned the totality of their Russian history knowledge from this battle. And this is the point I want to end today's video on. That while yes, epic rap battles of history is just a silly YouTube show, when it's at its best, it can get the audience interested in historical events and figures like nothing else. While not every episode has been a winner, at its core, the series has encouraged a generation of YouTube viewers to do research about the subjects mentioned on the show, resulting in millions learning more about the world around them. And because of that, I think Peter Lloyd and the rest of the team deserve our gratitude. And with that being said, I think it's only right that I conclude the video just as if it were an epic rap battle of history by asking you, the viewer, which battle won on your tier list and should be considered the greatest of all time. Though be warned, if you say Palin versus Gaga, I will block you.